All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and now welcome. Welcome to a game between La Et versus Kamiko. This game taking place here on Tide Hunters. Thank you for the bits. Time to stream. Maybe Blizzard will promote Arc Light by getting pro players in W fights and prize pool casted by Back to Warcraft. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully, I'll get invited into some of that as well, since I've, I've well, probably one of the few who know anything about uh, Warcraft Arc Light Rumble. Uh, but I believe the talk of the town in the real time strategy community is thank you for the sub as well. Is um, well, the upcoming Frost Giant announcement that will be uh, that is going to be on June the 9th, I believe. Also, please let me know how the audio sounds. I've adjusted my compression um, quite a bit. Um, I'm used to the interfaces on an actual soundboard where um, yellow is when you're beyond unity and red is when you're clipping. And apparently that is not the color coding scheme that XSplit has chosen to use. Um, and well, yellow is actually approaching Unity, and then red is you're almost at Unity for all of you sound people out there. So um, imagine my surprise when I was compressing my voice um, below 20, uh, negative 20 decibels or negative 20 dB. And I'm like, well, hopefully the sound is good. I'm waiting for the Twitch chat to, to talk to me about it and let me know whether or not it is good. But thank you for the bits. Thank you for um, the sub as Archmage going up against well it looks like a tavern hero coming in in this la lie at um, la versus kamiko matchup hey burrow rush good morning to you as well we can see ancient of war being built very far off to the north here on tide hunters and maybe trying to go after this ogre magi creep camp or this green creep camp here not 100 percent sure um, how all of this is going to be unfolding meanwhile the tavern hero is very much nearby wisp is going to be off here as well trying to hire up most likely what is going to be a beast master archmage already clearing out of this sea giant creep camp this sea giant creep camp um in games past actually had a spin attack and what is this um lalayette going for fire lord first all right so lalayette going for fire lord first ancient of war gonna get up train up three units and now start trying to tank some of that damage he gets ensnared which actually protects him from the the ai of the um, ai of the computer as we're looking at more units now trying to engage here ancient of war gonna still try to make its way back over here there goes another ensnare ancient of war gonna get into position and lalayette with a very very aggressive ancient of war creeping of a very high level creep camp the ogre magi now being brought back over the lava spawns are gonna start to split doubling their output as you can see that this ancient of war is getting repaired all right triple lava spawns are currently out here we may be going to quad here in just a moment fire lord picks up a potion of invulnerability meanwhile off to the north here kamiko looking to set up an expansion of his own all right potion of greater mana probably would have been a very very uh, strong call as well lava spawns looking to perhaps split one more time there is another double double split as we're going to see four units out here as they're splitting though they actually are not um, dealing any points of damage so that is one of the reasons why they don't seem to work out all that well archmage sitting at level two with brilliant or a footman trying to engage here as the fire lord trying to put in pressure in comes lava spawns lava spawns looking to put in a lot of damage triple lava spawns here as the lava spawns are just still continuing to run around forcing the cancellation potion of invulnerability was enough as we're looking at perhaps footman about to get taken down as well all right trying to rack up a little bit more damage footman and um, uh, unable to put pressure onto that fire lord as the fire lord is was invulnerable could end up getting taken down down to 30 hit points and he uses a scroll of town portal back just in time as well all right five lava spawns however they are gonna be dissolving into a puddle of nothing as you see archers quickly using that shadow meld to try and stay alive however a quick reveal or dust of appearance should be enough to stop that there meanwhile fire lord already marching back across the field looking to put in pressure onto this map as we are looking at well, a single lava spawn here is still putting in a little bit of pressure. There is the reveal. Archers are trying to run around in every different which way. As we see the Fire Lord now show back up to the party. There's a new lava spawn in position here, but it is going to end up getting pressured. Lava spawns have a high priority because of that very, very uh, powerful splitting ability as the Fire Lord here tries to chase down this peasant. All right, still waiting for um, the people on the chat to actually tell me how my audio sounds since I did make a number of changes. Um, YouTube, I guess it's up to you. 
as the Twitch folks are not and well, helping me out here. Coming back around, Archer's continuing to try to put pressure on Kamiko's expansion. Kamiko is sitting on a very low amount of lumber. Will he be able to speed build this? Yes, he is trying to speed build this here and now getting up this lumber mill. mill. Meanwhile, back at home of Lolai at Sound is Great, Sounds Good. Um, meanwhile, Lolai at is at tier two already and now picks up a naga sea witch all right so this is pressure from the tavern heroes being able to get out that tavern hero so quickly as the fire lord well looking to perhaps finish off more and more units level two lava spawn um does deal significantly more damage but lava spawns are very very well mana inattensive and the fire lord is often out of mana i don't see the difference but i always adjust my volume on my speaker um, well, if you can see the difference in my sound, um, I don't know, you must be tripping on something. Anyways, coming back around, Tree of Ages, Ancient of Lore, um, taking the, well, Tree of Ages, taking the Tree of Eternity, Ancient of Lores, dual Ancient of Lores for Dryads or perhaps Bears, as the Naga Sea Witch and the Fire Lord look to level up a little bit more. Coming back through, we're picking up some additional items your voice demands we pump up the volume all right thank you very much here as we're looking at the water elemental is it going to get taken down it looks as though it is and it is not denied level two lava spawns looking to put in pressure here footman still without the fen as you're looking at well footman after footman starting to fall here they do have medium armor on these giant sea turtles so piercing damage really not what you want to be going after as the footmen are looking to finish off some of these archers down to the south archers all hiding in the brush and off to the side here meanwhile N fire lord and well fire lord and naga sea which still looking to level up there's level two on that naga sea which now perhaps going for that forked lightning archmage of kamiko wants to get up to level three has double circuits of nobility double rings of protection and claws of attack here as we're looking at the archmage now trying to dive on in ring of protection plus three is going to be the dropped item here footmen are going to be taking quite a bit of damage as they are trying to retreat back and still the murlocs are um, joining in on the battle as well a little bit of slow right there are we going to see some enough damage onto the footman no footman down to 29 hit points able to escape meanwhile other footmen um, are well not going to be as lucky as dryads are now starting to join in on the battle and with that slow poison gonna make retreating that much more difficult all right we're looking at archmage looks like it will be able to shake off that slow poison and make its way back off to the north this low hit point no no this low hit point footman yeah able to live and fight another um bay yeah fire lord still has not chosen a second skill as of yet ancient of war now going to be tanking a little a lot of that damage as the fire lord laughs as he gets hit in the head uh, with a boulder not quite sure what type of fire lord wants to get hit in the head and then his stun animation is was often just him laughing it off here as the rock golem will eventually get taken down so the mask is the drop perfect picked up for that fire lord as the fire lord is one of the few who um well is an agility based hero even though um, most of the time it feels like he should be a very strong caster as Kamiko finishes off this wall off off to the north, he's going to be banking on his economic advantage as he's now teching to tier two. Meanwhile, we are already at tier three going for mastery training on these druids of the claw. And that will give, well, and that will give La Layette a bit of a tech advantage. But how long will that last? Gauntlets of Ogre Strength plus three also picked up here. Naga Sea Witch sitting at level three. It hasn't used its level three skill point either. And most likely will be forked lightning and in order to try and take down some of those other units as you are looking at footmen all getting slowed up around different targets here are we going to see another footman getting picked off this footman looks like as it is just going to get taken out naturally and maybe before it tries to dive in on to this red creep camp off to the north Meanwhile, Archmage down at the south here, still doing a lot of scouting, has sold those rings of protection as we see the Archmage in a little bit of trouble. Are we going to see a Fire Lord right there? Lava spawn. No easy way to um, stop the Archmage from that um, channeled ability. I actually think, I don't know, should the Fire Lord have tried to stop that channeled ability? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below as the Archmage would have just then used the Scroll of Town Portal. Um, or is that... Um, as we're looking at a scroll of regeneration being left behind, perhaps for a mountain king to eventually pick up as it is going to be making its way over. Druids of the Claw in that frontline spot going to transform into that bear. We are looking at granite golems here 
as the lava spawns are pre pretty much getting completely ignored here. What is the C9 Hunter doing? It is chasing after all of these targets and now not really engaging against anything. Orb of Venom now on that Fire Lord, so racking up that damage over a Soul Burn stop staffing. Um, I it, is it a channeled ability? Um, let's see. That's what I that, that that's what I actually was wondering. Normally, Soul Burn you can still use potions of healing and whatnot, but um, does it stop channeled abilities? Right. If it if you can't cast spells, is the Staff of Teleportation considered a a, a channeled or a casting ability? Or and does it quote unquote stun you? All right, what is this that we're looking at here? We are looking at a Priestess of the Moon as the third hero. Lalayette finally using a Knight Elf hero. And this may be for True Shot Aura. Dryads, Archers, and Lava Spawns all working together. It would stop a channel spell, but not an item. All right. Um, yeah. The fact that I need a little bit of... My apologies for not un if I if I am misspeaking um, about Soulburn. Soulburn is a s ability so rarely used that um, I, perhaps it is understandable if I not hundred percent hundred percent certain. Fire Lord just standing off to the side here. Lava or Moon Wells are not at maximum capacity as of yet, and we are getting that Wellspring ability here as the Archmage is once again going to attempt to shut down. There is that. Soul Burn ability right there, Water Elemental, um, tr attempting to finish things off. And I think Soul Burn was purposely used in, in order to try and stop a second Water Elemental from being cast by Kamiko. Meanwhile, also only one Archmage there. The Water Elemental has nothing, or the Archmage does not have a Water Elemental fighting alongside it as the units are looking to retreat back again. Meanwhile, Naga Sea Witch getting to level, or will be getting to level 4 here. Priestess of the Moon sitting at level 2. And now also having that Owl Scout in order to, well, keep track and keep tabs on what is happening all around the map. Lala yet being incredibly aggressive, aggressive with the creeping now, and taking down multiple red creep camps and should have a hero level or does have a big hero level advantage. And 4-4-2 four, four, going up against just a 3-2, but the army size and the economic advantage of Kamiko is still in play as this entangled gold mine has not yet finally entangled. All right, a couple of illusions are being placed down here. Mountain King trying to engage Soul Burn on the Archmage. Archmage down to 71 hit points, 72. He's able to back away. Mountain King unable to find that target there as we're looking at the Fire Lord continuing to rack up a bit of pressure. Footman perhaps could take a lot of damage here as the Entangled Goldmine constantly trying to be set up only to see it constantly getting cancelled as the Archmage takes a little bit of damage. No, no damage over time. That is just the Orb of Venom from the Illusion and Illusions don't deal damage. Back across here, the Priestess of the Moon, if it gets to level 3, that level 2 True Shot Aura, um, boosting up the Priestess of the or the Priestess of the Moon, the Naga Sea Witch, the Dryads, and also those Lava Spawns could potentially be huge. Priestess of the Moon needs quite a bit more experience, may not be able to get there as the Naga Sea Witch is, well, taking just enough experience to deny level 3. All right couple of lava spawns in the back there uh, easy green creep camp would give um, priestess of the moon level three gloves of haste being left behind why would you leave behind gloves of haste especially if you have orb of venom let's go ahead and get uh, pick that back up on that priestess of the moon finishing off this uh, creep camp here as we see dual orbs of venom already on the priestess of the moon and the fire lord naga sea which may not go for it at may or may not go for it cold arrows often better in order to pick off units and make sure they are slowly retreating away all right last or second to last major creep camp here there's still one orange creep camp app off at the four o'clock position as the bears tank some damage this creep camp should fall quickly it should not give any real level up but should be able to give a, a powerful consumable item in that potion of invulnerability footman easily taken down there onk of reincarnation also picked up by that fire lord beautifully done here what items were picked up as we are looking at kamiko going to the air all right so kamiko 
opting to go for triple griffin aviary and now going for storm hammers with also um, dragon hawk riders ancient of winds have been trained up here to perhaps try to go for a hippogriff or two dryads are going to have a bit of a difficult time even though they do have level two true shot aura giving them a bit of a damage advantage however kamiko with the economic advantage has two one upgrades on all of um, on those swords boosting not only the griffins but also those dragon hawk riders which will be well important at finishing off those dryads all oh, night elf all right getting ready to engage here archmage paladin mountain king all working together here and um, dragon hawk riders the air has three one upgrades getting um, why go air at this situation well it the high mobility and the narrow walkways dryads are having a difficult time just even trying to keep track and keep up with these targets footmen could be going for um what well, could be using um defend to try and reflect back some of that damage and the druid of the claw quickly gonna get taken down right there you can see that magic damage going after those targets so fast uh, dryads now trying to retreat back fork lightning trying to finish things off scroll of healing used by kamiko as we're looking at bears going to get focused down pretty quickly paladin what well, uh well with a potion of invulnerability trying to retreat back paladin can have a very very bad day here no one really trying to heal him up as the dryads are just running around in circles another fork lightning coming back around orb of venom another scroll of healing used by the air army going wide as unit after unit is starting to fall paladin is in trouble gets up to level two picks up in the goblin zeppelin and gonna be able to survive a little while longer no ends up getting taken down soul burn was on the paladin and it does not protect you while you were inside did not use divine shield and was well in trouble there meanwhile more fighting underway lava spawn gonna get taken down very rarely do i ever see a unit die while inside that goblin zeppelin as the fire lord and naga sea witch do a double level up mountain king could turn back around are we gonna see oh there's that soul burn right there mountain king trying to retreat back away orb of venom damage slow poison and soul burn causing so many problems as a scroll of town portal finally being used in order to get that save right there off to the north mountain king needs to find a way to hear scroll of regeneration now being used as the dryads and well the night elf army looking to put in pressure here there's a fork lightning as the naga sea witch using staff uh, or using that mana shield in order to absorb a bit more damage and this is triple orb of venom um, um yeah triple orb of venom on three ranged heroes from the night elf player and those Orba Venoms do stack from each hero. So now we're looking at, well, what is this? Using the marketplace and buying powerful items, grabbing Unholy Aura on the Priestess of the Moon, acting as, well, the glue that is holding this army together. I'll help you attack faster, regenerate more hit points, and deal more damage for everyone in the army and in this fight. Units trying to retreat back here. Uh, we're looking at 79 over 90 supply compared to 72. Kamiko with a slight supply advantage, but it doesn't feel like an advantage at all as he's getting pummeled by dual level 5 heroes and a level 3 Priestess of the Moon with level 2 True Shot Aura. Staff of Preservation, Law Liet, uh, saving back that Fire Lord once again. Are we actually going to be going into... well? still too early to say if we're going to go into volcano or or tornado um, from the naga sea witch or um, a fire lord but this could be a game of natural disasters um, if we get to the ultimate abilities or if this game is thrown three two on those dragon hawk riders are we getting the three three upgrades blacksmith off over here yes we are opting to go now to level three for full upgrades on these units here also we are looking at devotion or on that paladin so these dragon hawk riders currently have seven armor uh, essentially acting as three three upgrades and could eventually get into nine armor once this upgrade is done nine armor is a great is a large amount of reduction however the orb of venom and the fork lightning um, bypasses um, the, that actual armor that is one of the reasons why um, damage over time and spell damage is so important as well 
effective hit points only counts for against normal attacks. Staff of Preservation teleports the unit all the way back home. It should be trying to rejuvenate itself. We're taking a look at, well, slow poison onto a Griffin Rider. That Griffin Rider down to 474 hit points, continuing to tick away as a new tree of life is being, uh, well, being established. A new expansion down to the south here. We're looking at air attacks, fork lightning going back across multiple units as the dragon hawk rider well slowly takes damage over time still squirrels of healing yes only on the mountain king though griffin um well griffin rider needs to get holy lighted or staff of sanctuary back home mountain king now taking a little bit of damage here what is going to happen with that mountain king mountain king orb of venom as if the dryads actually staggered their attack the mountain king would not be able to um well would not be able to shake off that slow poison nearly as quickly and then will not be able to retreat all the way back home dryad upgrades no uh, well two or one two upgrades now on those dryads um so we are getting caught up in the upgrade front as the naga sea which now looks to retreat back and interestingly enough uh, it looks like tornado or volcano is going to be what is necessary to break the siege defenses that Kamiko has established however Kamiko already going up into high upkeep 85 over 100 supply as the main gold mines um, his main gold mine is nearly mined out and the natural expansion has only what six and a half minutes of mining left shocky shocks how you doing glad to see ya yeah no two, 2v2s are a lot of fun coming back around fire lord naga sea which Priestess of the Moon, what other items can they possibly buy from the shop here? Potions of Invulnerability, Claws of Attack, plus 5, Orb of Venom. That Fire Lord has plus 22 damage. The Naga Sea Witch has plus 14, and the Priestess of the Moon has plus 23 with Claws of Attack, plus 12. That damage is just rather high, and also a fast attack speed on that Priestess of the Moon. That damage just racks up. Um that damage just racks up over time we are seeing a transition however by kamiko into a workshop and also trying to get mortar teams those mortar teams are going to be key at destroying and and constantly making sure that the dryads are being forced to move around once they become stationary that's really when their damage um that's really when their damage starts to add up more but by having mortar teams just raining down those shards the dryads constantly need to move as you can see that flare constantly being shot above him as kamiko knows exactly where la Layette's army is at any given moment kamiko now maxed out on supply 100 over 100 we're going to get to get into an engagement here in just a second archmage paladin mount uh, and well mortar is now going to get ready to engage here as we can see a big amount of damage soul burn straight up onto a mortar team mortar team not minus 36 percent minus 36 um, damage here we can still see how quickly that damage racks up on that tree of life and how important um, fortified damage or or a siege damage is at forcing engagements both sides have armies that have been relatively weak against destroying buildings until the mortar teams are added in and suddenly well la Layette being forced into a fight that he doesn't really want to be in fire lord quickly gets taken down more damage still getting added on back through here as the mortar teams could try and burst down that tree of life that tree of life getting taken down would be a big deal indeed as we're looking at what well, staff of preservation saving that fire lord there after the stun mountain king sitting at level four still more holy lighting there as the mortar teams should be attempting to take down this tree of life as that is a key key moment and still has 6,000 gold. Not quite sure why Kamiko is backing off here. He has the supply advantage. And why is he backing off here? All right, siege engines down to the south, attempting to take down a tree of life. Another, nope, not another siege engine. More siege engines could be rolling on over eventually, trying to rebuild the timing. Kamiko um, had... Uh, well, had the pressure mounting up and then decided to to back off i think a couple of rounds of the attack from the mortar teams could have been enough as we're looking at well massive repairs on this tree of life here armies looking to work together paladin still sitting at level two scrolls of he or scroll of healing only on the paladin this time around as the army making its way out across the battlefield mountain giant 
Fire Lord, you, you can see, well, the, the not much experience has been gained by the Night Elf army recently. Perhaps we're going to be looking at a little bit more damage. And here we are racking that back up here. Level 3 Lava Swan just going to easily get a, a bursted down here. Mortar Team actually on the wrong side and could get separated. Going to go ahead and try to go for an engagement. Mortar Team's fighting the Dryads and being able to shard them down quite a bit. You can see the damage is racking up as the Paladin wants to stay close by here forcing an engagement and forcing a retreat across all of these units as the mountain giants are trying to push oh, push on in again. Mortar teams need to back away. Fork lightning onto the main heroes. Potion of invulnerability used by the paladin. As we can see, the dryads are actually getting just absolutely pummeled. And we're still perhaps going to see a storm bolt onto that fire lord. All right, stun onto the fire lord. Potion of invul invulnerability used in time. Dragonhawk riders are in trouble. 66 supply compared to 92 as the mountain king falls at level 4. All right, trying to finish off all of those units. Fire Lord down to 12 hit points. It gets taken down, though. And now, level 4 on the Archmage, level 3 on that Paladin, which is absolutely key for that level 2 Holy Light, as he still has plenty of mana. All right, Tree of Life now taken down there pretty quickly. See, um, Siege Engine down to the south here, attempting to take down this Tree of Life. However, it is just going to get destroyed. Meanwhile, we are attempting, well, he should be trying to speed to build this town hall. Not, not quite sure what is taking so long as the mountain giants are still going after all of these dryads here. Dryad after dryad is falling. Nagas or Fire Lord could get taken down for the second time. No, does not. And the Dragonhawk Riders are still trying to keep up. But the Unholy Aura on the Priestess of the Moon giving those dryads just a little bit in order to be able to back out. Yeah, each game has been ex ex in very, very different, played um, in different ways. Thank you, Metaphysics, um, for um, for all of that. Meanwhile, Archmage is actually going to try and staff of teleportation out of the tricky situation there. Almost finishes it off. Archmage actually could be in trouble. Where is that Archmage at? Archmage quickly gets a holy light as a, I believe Soulburn was cast on that Archmage, but I believe there was a holy light in time. Scroll of Regeneration keeping all of these units alive again. Mountain King getting trained back up. Owl Scout keeping the tabs on everything here as the 3-3 three, three upgraded nine armor dragon hawks. Um, well, or yeah, no, seven armor dragon hawks, nine armor with that devotion aura, really shaking off much of the damage that is being dealt. All right, Priestess of the Moon sitting at level two true shot aura here. We're still looking at, nope, this base has been completely mined or, or has been shut down. And now Kamiko, well, no wonder I'm constantly confused. The colors were wrong. Yellow versus blue. Kamiko is blue. Lali et was yellow. And yeah, the colors were wrong. Hence why the confusion on the overlay. Anyways, coming back here, we are looking at mining by Kamiko at that 8 o'clock position. Kamiko now making its way back around. Lali et going to look to engage here. No problem. Just a simple. <laughs> yep. Giving giving the variety. Thank you there. Dragonhawk Riders looking to put in pressure. Orb of Venom taunt on those frontline mountain giants. And here we are getting in that damage. Fork Lightning. However, Staff of Preservation needed to save that Naga Siebich, who was, well, very much in that frontline position. More damage racking back up. Fire Lord, Potion of, less, or potion of Invulnerability still available. Down to 171 hit points as that damage is racking back up onto that mountain giant now. Mountain giant with 10 armor and, and medium armor resistant to the piercing damage and the magic damage still taking large amounts of damage uh, just because of the sheer size of Kamiko's army. Kamiko with, um, well, with that very strong um, combination of mortar teams and air, the mortar teams are actually hiding underneath the Dragonhawk riders, so it is difficult to actually click on them, trying to be able to focus fire down on those weaker units um, that are sitting underneath all of these dragon hawk riders has been extremely extremely helpful as we're going to see this tree of life perhaps get bursted down here one or two more volleys is all that is going to be needed as it gets taken down there's that fork lightning though and you saw that what happens if the priestess of the moon was able to click on those mortar teams quickly quickly taken out there 91 supply compared to 61 ancient of wind looking to join in on the fight as well dealing damage against the archmage as the units are still retreating back 5-5-4 five, five, compared to 4-4-3. Four, four, Battling still happening here as the Archmage falls at level 4. Dragonhawk Riders trying to chase, trying to avenge the death of their leader. But are they going to over overcommit a bit too much as the Staff of Preservation saves the Priestess of the Moon? 
Fire Lord now trying to retreat back as well. He's down to 214 hit points. The movement speed could be a problem as the Fire Lord once again gets staffed to preservation by the Naga Sea Witch. Naga Sea Witch now is the one that has no one really trying to help it as we're looking at damage racking up across multiple units here again and again. Dryad's trying to retreat back. Mortar teams accidentally hitting their own Mountain King. Mountain King not at enough mana as the Archmage was taken down. Archmage resurrected at the tavern. Paladin right there should be able to give a holy light and, and get that Archmage back up to operational capacity as the town hall here is the only gold now being mined by Kamiko. This expansion, the Tree of Eternity, ha has been repositioned. The Staff of Preservation now leads you to no man's land with no moon wells nearby and could be a bit of a, of a, well, a sticking point. 76 supply compared to 58. Is it going to be hero level advantage or army size advantage that wins out in this battle? Mortar teams, Mountain King in that front line spot. Holy light for the save right there. Staff of Preservation should be inbound. There is a couple of taunts. As we're looking at that Mountain Giant down to 176 hit points, he is being completely ignored. No, um, he's going to be ignored and finally taken out there. No, exp no level ups to be seen, but the Paladin now very close to level 4 as the Archmage. Also very close to level 5. Trying to pick up some of those units here. Are we, we going to see a Storm Bolt onto that Mountain Giant? Mountain Giant still trying to retreat back here. Damage still racking back up as we're going to see the N Naga Sea Witch now take a little bit of damage. Staff of Preservation only teleports him, well, a couple of pixels to the north there as we are fighting at the Tree of Eternity. Fire Lord continuing the fight here. Naga Sea Witch, Potion of Invulnerability in time as the units are still trying to retreat back here. Paladin is going to be in a little bit of trouble as well as looking at the Griffins trying to change targets as well. 61 supply compared to 45, 15 supply advantage. Um, and that is about it as the Mountain King gets a Storm Bolt off on the Mountain Giant. Mountain Giant, is he going to get taken down? Yes, but more importantly, a double level up giving um, even a higher armor, no, Divine Shield now on that Paladin as an easy get out of get out of jail free ability as the Dryads quickly abolish magic down that frontline Water Elemental Mountain King looking to land a Storm Bolt. It is level 3 Brilliance Aura as and that is incredibly important. Triple damage onto the Dragonhawk Riders. However, Holy Light saving the low hit point one right there. More damage getting racked up onto those uh, Dryads. Dryads with level 3 armor. Um, or uh, level 3 upgrades on their armor able to prevent much of that damage as we're still seeing well because all the mortar teams are gone nothing really getting taken um, those buildings are really not getting taken down now Mountain King still in that frontline spot Fork Lightning going down there 48 supply compared to 43 Kamiko only has a slight supply advantage now um, in what 9 supply in that army and we are looking at the Ancient of Wind has moved over and now is trying to take down the expansion itself coming back around Priestess of the Moon seeing that level 4 could get to level 5 here this could be a problem 48 supply compared to 43 la Layette has closed up the gap significantly as all the peasants are attempting to take down that ancient of wind it does not look like it is going to work out well mountain king down to 600 hit points it is trailing behind everyone else there's a holy light for the save a little bit of additional devotion aura as the mountain king tries to shake off much of that damage Dryad now getting in front of that Mountain King as well, unable to bash, beautiful dancing back and forth as the Mountain King finally bashes and now trying to shake its way free. Griffins finally finish off that Ancient of Wind off on the other side. Paladin now low on mana, Staff of Sanctuary for the save as now the Paladin is in the similar trouble trying to retreat back and get back off to the north. Kamiko, um, well, going to end up losing his mining at this expansion here. Meanwhile, a siege engine is attempting to take down this tree of eternity. There's 2,600 gold left in that gold mine, about four and a half minutes still. And this game is still anyone's game here. Kamiko has caught up a little bit, but we are now looking at dual level six heroes um, in the Naga Sea Witch and the Fire Lord, and surprisingly enough, they did not go for ultimate abilities. Instead, opting to choose level 2 Mana Shield over Tornado, and a level 3 Soul Burn over Volcano. So, two level 6 heroes, but still nothing really to show for it. Perhaps trying to go for auto attacks more, since this is, the, this is the triple orb of Venom strategy. Yeah, once, why would you want to have your heroes channeling abilities? But at the same time, um, well, we're not going to 
I don't think he's going to be able to force an engagement. He wants to fight the army straight up, not force an engagement at a base, as this is not a base race scenario yet. It's going to come down to your armies engaging against each other and who's able to come out on top. Kamiko sitting at 52 supply compared to Lala yet 42. And this tree of life is going to end up getting taken down. And with that, well, things are going to could go sideways here. Storebolt onto the um, onto the Naga Sea Witch. Naga Sea Witch, however, does have Mana Shield up and operational, able to absorb quite a bit of damage. And now finally taking um, taking hit point damage as he looks to retreat back. Naga Sea Witch trying to turn things back around here. More damage onto that Naga Sea Witch. Naga Sea Witch trying to retreat back. Orb of Venom. Mana Shield has come to an end. More damage going to try and engage. Mountain King Lake losing some damage over time, but the Paladin is still nearby, ready to do all of those heals. 42 supply compared to 49. Army size advantage. Fire Lord trying to get to that new, that other moon well in the very far back. Anti Magic Shell, re, um, well, be able to resist some of that damage as the Fire Lords or the Lava Spawns are now out here as well. Quick Storm Bolt, and now those, well, Griffin Riders able to deal so much damage to that heavy armor unit. Naga Sea Witch, Potion of Invulnerability. Moon Wells are completely bone dry. 46 supply compared to 42, but, and it looks as though Staff of Preservation actually comes in for the save. Mountain King gets taken down. Naga Sea Witch trying to retreat away, down to 118 hit points as the Mountain King gets taken down. Naga Sea Witch now needs to try and get away as quickly as possible. Boots of Speed plus Endurance Aura plus Unholy Aura makes it fast enough, and Kamiko gives the GG. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of in shock here. I'm trying to recap what's what's happening. Kamiko had the the supply advantage going into the fight. Lalaet was being thrown into his corner, but his corner had moon wells. He was able to heal up pretty consistently, and then the Naga Sea Witch with boots of speed, endurance aura, and unholy aura was able to to just simply slither out of there um at at sub 50 hit points it felt like uh and yeah that was just a, a crazy crazy game in the end the dryads would then be able to easily finish off all of the griffins mountain king was no longer a real challenge and yeah that that game just went out all all over the place i hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching thanks for listening Leave comments below.